The thing I like most about my home, or that I've learned to love most about my home, is um, that it is lived in. And a part of my personality is very Martha Stewart, very uh, type A angles and everything, um, but a part of me also loves the whimsicalness of the idea of someone living there. I do love having things on my fridge, showing that people live there. I love toys in the corner. Um, obviously I cleaned my house so I don't have fingerprints, but the, those things in my home are things that I love the most. Um, showing that there's life here, that there are memories being made, and that um, I have kids here. Brad is my husband and he is currently working on his full-time MBA at BYU. We have two boys. We have Carter, who will be three at the end of March, and Tag will be one middle of March. So they're almost exactly two years apart. And they are full of energy, and they're a lot of fun. I teach preschool out of our home. I've been teaching preschool. This is my fourth year teaching. I graduated from BYU in elementary education, and I originally thought I would maybe teach older grades. Um, if I ever got into teaching full time. And that didn't end up happening and I had some people in our neighborhood approach me to teach preschool and I'm loving it. It's just two days a week so it's not too taxing on family time or anything but I, I love it, the kids are darling. They're so excited to learn and to be together and it's fun. Brad and I were married summer of 2010 and about a year and a half uh, after we got married we were almost done with school and we decided we wanted to start trying to have a family. So we started that process and things weren't really happening. We weren't getting pregnant and um, so we started running some tests and doing some doctor's appointments and it was about, a, it wasn't about nine months later that we found out that we couldn't have kids. And that was something that was very hard for me to wrap my head around at first. Um, Sorry. Um, all I ever wanted sorry, um, was to be a mom and for something like this to happen to us just was really, really hard for me to understand. Wanting, I've never wanted something more in my life and to learn that there was no physically possible way for us to be able to get pregnant, except for miracles, of course. Um, that was a really hard thing for me and um, as we were finding that out, we immediately, we knew we needed to have a family. We knew we wanted to have a family more than anything. And so before we even had received all of the finalized official test results um, telling us that we wouldn't be able to have kids, uh, we started talking about adoption. We did a lot of research finding out what kind of stuff we needed to do to be able to adopt. We reached out to a lot of different people and connections. And once we had started that process, we were adoption ready. And about four months later, we uh, were contacted by our first little boy, Carter, his birth mom, and she um, asked us to be the parents in December, and he was born um, that spring, and we learned a lot about relationships through that process and the amazing uh, relationships that you can have with adoption, the openness that there is in a lot of adoption, and that has become a very big part of our lives. Um, in adoption, most adoptions are open, and level of openness varies from child to child and birth mother to birth mother and family to family and so much of what and who our family is now is because of those relationships and because they've become family these birth mothers and their families have become a very important part of our families and are loved and respected and appreciated and we love them both so dearly when tag was born uh, about a year ago and his birth mother contacted us just the January, just January of last year, and she had some interesting situations and uh, unique circumstances, and she saw the level of openness that we had with Carter's birth mom, and that was very appealing to her because we, she wanted those open relationships, and we have those open relationships with them. We go to lunch, we have visits. Tag's birth mom has even babysat for us. She babysat for us a couple weeks ago, and these birth mothers, I've learned so much about what they have to go through through this adoption process, and there's so much sacrifice made in by them, and it's the most selfless decision any of these women have made. A lot of times it's looked down on because it's it's a, a cop-out or like a lazy choice or whatever someone wants to call it crazy, but 
um, when it really comes down to it, these women are giving their whole heart and their whole soul for these children, their children, to have the greatest opportunities that they um, could ever dream for them. And I was thinking about different things that I want in my future for myself, that things that I want to give back, things that I want to accomplish, and I've had the opportunity a few times to teach in the high schools, in the high school health classes about adoption awareness. I was so grateful that, I'm so grateful that I've had these opportunities to teach them and to help them see the amazing relationships and benefits that can come from adoption from both sides and, and see that I can share my role as mother uh, with these birth mothers, share that love of these sweet boys and both of us knowing and wanting the best for them in every way. And that has really motiva motivated me in my future to want, it's, you know, it's still pretty fresh and pretty early, these ideas that I have, but we, Brad and I have talked about raising awareness in adoption somehow in some way and help people to know that adoption is an option and, and that it's a beautiful experience for everyone involved. What I love about living with kids or being with kids um, at home is they are very exciting. They definitely keep things entertaining. I love, this is kind of where preschool plays in too, I love to watch them learn and discover things for the very first time. My son Tag is learning how to pull himself up onto furniture right now and he's so proud of himself when he does it and um, Carter learning how to draw shapes and different things. Some of the hardest things about being a mom and having kids at home, number one is consistency. Being consistent in anything, whether it's discipline or routine or eating habits or anything like that, consistency is definitely the hardest thing. Just knowing if what you're doing is the right thing, doubting yourself, and you read all these different things about the best way to get your kids to do this or that or the other, and there are definitely things that I've tried on these articles that have been very helpful and beneficial, um, but I'm, I'm having to learn to also trust myself and trust my heart um, as I'm trying to help my kids learn, like what do I want them to learn? from this or what I want them to come out of this knowing and that's hard to think about when you're talking about like a, an 11 month old and a two almost three year old um, but those are definitely the hard things. The messes, I kind of like them because it just, that's kind of what I craved, what I ached for when we were waiting for babies was the fingerprints everywhere and the food on the floor and the baths every every time they make a mess and, at dinner. and. In my dream world, I would have white couches in the living room and things like that, but that dream world uh, with kids, those two dream worlds didn't really go together. So I settled for a white bedspread that I have to watch, wash pretty regularly on my bed. But a lot of, I, and I couldn't even say what kind of, what style of design that I have. I just find things that I like. I like to have color, but I like to have neutral basics because I get bored with what I have so I can switch things up, ideally, you know, that's the ideal. One item of furniture that I love is our TV stand and my husband actually despises it. It's really heavy and it's old and I've refinished it twice and I actually have to refinish it again because it's a long story. But anyway, so it's been a headache for him, but it's a beautiful piece from a very special Person. Another favorite is my bed frame. Um, it's another long story, but I scored that thing for free and it was exactly what I was looking for in the end. So those are just some fun things that I just that just make me smile when I see them. My mom life may not have necessarily happened how or when I had planned in my planner life, but I am so grateful for the way <laughs> the way that it has turned out and the relationships that we've developed and the joy that our kids bring to our lives. My uh, greatest joy is being a mother and there are very important things for me to do and to be aside from being a mother, but I truly believe and I'm grateful for uh, that I, my number one role is to be a mother and a homemaker, to bring a spirit of peace and comfort um, into our home, to be able to help people feel welcome here and feel loved and I'm so grateful for that that I've been trusted with the family that I have and that I have daily challenges that help me to be the wife and mother and homemaker that I am.